I'm so, so touched by this. It's like having a carnival in the woods. Pogos, what a day. Hiking, foraging, and pogos. A spicy mayo. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of the Camo Chef. Today we're going to be making beer battered pogos on the campfire. Actually my first try so stay tuned as we uh, attempt this. Shout out to the uh, Outdoor Boys for giving me this idea. Did a wonderful job of it on their channel and I thought ah, I think that's something I'd like to try. Mine is a little different and I'll discuss that as we go along. Why beer battered pogos? Well what I thought about is what do we always have at camp? Well, we generally always have oil to fry stuff in. We usually have pancake mix for at least one of the breakfasts. I usually have beer with me. And, of course, hot dogs. Camp staple. Everybody has hot dogs when they go camping. Well, not everybody. But most people have hot dogs when they go camping. Those four things put together, beer batter pogos. The pancake mix I choose to use is to just add water. And instead of adding water, I add beer. The difference between my recipe and the one that they use in the Outdoor Boys is in the Outdoor Boys, he chose to use a mason jar to make his batter in, which is very sensible because it's easy clean up and it's very long, tall and narrow. Your batter's all in one spot to dip your hot dog in. What I don't like about that is you're bringing glass into the woods. So I am going to bring mine in an Nalgene bottle and I already have my pancake mix in this. So I'll add beer to this, shake it up, stir it up really well in the bottom as well. And before you know it, we'll have the batter for our pogos. I know it's not corn batter, I know it's not a traditional pogo batter, but this is improvising at camp with what you have on hand. So try it out and enjoy it. Today, we're also going to kick it up an extra notch because not only are we going to have pogos, we're going to make a dipping sauce with it and stay tuned for that as well. First things first, we're going to prep everything. We're going to get a fire going here at the camp at our little bush cap area. So here we are about to make a nice campfire. We're going to make a small one, nothing too big. I'm going to put a raft down on the damp ground because we had some rain showers last evening. On top of the raft, I'm just going to some pencil sized sticks and some yellow birch. And we're also using some old man's beard. Nice dry moss grows on trees. And today, I know some people think this is sacrilegious, but this is common sense. When you're in the woods, you should always have a way of lighting fire. The simplest one is carry a Bic lighter. Not always the most reliable. I have a ferro rod in my backpack as well. Someone else in our group has matches. We have three ways to light a fire, so we're good. But we're hungry. We've been foraging for wild edibles today and walking around. It's time for lunch. We're going to get at it. Here we go. So by having the one log across the raft, I'm leaning everything up onto it and that allows airflow to come through and catch everything. And I'm trying to be patient. We're just going to keep doing this till we get a nice fire going. We'll need some bed of coals to get our oil warmed up to about 375 degrees. But in the meantime, I brought my mess kit with some water. I'm going to put some water next to the fire to get it warmed up because we're going to enjoy some Hades coffee. I have Irish Raptor for Marla because that's one of her preferences. And I have the Lazarus for myself. Myself being a shift worker, I really like the Lazarus. It's double caffeinated. That little kick really, really helps. And today, I need it, so I'm going to take advantage of it. As always, we have a way to put this fire out. Uh, we have a bucket down here where this fire pit is. We keep in on a wood pile. Uh, right now, it's being used as a seat, which goes to show the diversity of a five-gallon pail in the woods. I'm not suggesting littering. This is private land, and this is an area that's used for fires quite a bit. A lot of people 
use this land. The owners are very generous with the land use. Some other guys come through in the winter and skidoo through here. There's uh, another family that live close by that walk and do nature hikes through here. It's well used, so we leave a five gallon bucket here because the creek behind us, we can take water out and douse this fire quite quickly. I also have a folding shovel in my backpack that we can take out if we end up with a grease fire and throw sand on stuff and douse stuff down because we're dealing with hot oil today and water and hot oil do not mix and only make it worse for fire. So as our water warms up for our coffee, I'm gonna get going on a few prep things. So like I said, four ingredients basically. We have canola oil in this bottle. I packed it in in a sealed water bottle. It's a liter. As this cooks, the batter's gonna absorb a lot of that oil. We won't have as much to pack out. If you're doing interior camping with oil, the waste oil you don't want sitting around in a pot in camp. It'll attract animals, bears more than likely. You don't want that. Even in car camping campgrounds, bears are popular and you don't want bears in your camp. So you have to deal with your oil and be prepared to deal with your oil. I can't put hot oil back in this. I could leave it sit in the pot and be cool and let it cool, but I planned ahead. I have a metal water bottle that I specifically use for waste oil when I'm camping. I do let it cool in this before I put it on because the rubber gasket gets uh, singed if you're putting 350 degree oil into this. So I'll wait for that and pack that out with me. It's always good to have a lid for the pot you're choosing to use for deep frying things in. You have to have a way to snuff that out if it gets away on you. Fire and oil don't mix very well, especially if you're dealing with high flames like this. That's why I'm waiting right now and boiling water on the flames. Once this burns down to coals and ember, I'll be putting the pot on and keeping the fire away from the pot as much as possible. Let's talk about this now. Just add water pancake mix. Makes a great batter. One way to kick this batter up a notch is to add beer instead of water. You end up with a beer batter. It's great for fish and I've done it once or twice with pogos. So I think it's gonna work out here at camp with pogos. I've done it at home, but we're gonna try it and see where we go. The great thing about a day hike like this when we're in the woods, this is the time to experiment before you're camping and commit it to a menu and to food rationing. Pack your garbage out, please. I've prepared some sticks for the pogos. We just cut some green branches, shave them off. You want that bark off of there because you, you don't want the taste of the tan and that bitter taste of the bark in with your food. We're gonna use one of these sticks to stir this up. I'm gonna get it all the corners, get it off the bottom into a nice batter. That looks really good. I think I got everything. And that's got a nice texture to it where it's gonna to stick to the hot dog. So the principle here is hot oil, hot dog, dip in the Nalgene, nice tall slim container. It doesn't have to be an Nalgene. If you choose to be car camping or at the cottage and use a mason jar, that's great. If you have a plastic reusable sealable container, that's even better. And then that will just deep fry on the fire in the oil. That's the principle. Sometimes principles don't work out and we might end up having hot dogs on a stick with some burnt drippings on it. Who knows? I'm going to put the lid on the batter for now. Keep the ashes out of it. We just have some generic hot dogs here. Nothing too special. Hot dog of your choice. Little pro tip. Always choose a hot dog that'll fit inside your pot. That will fit inside my pot. If I had a jumbo dog, it would stick out and my pogo wouldn't taste as good on the bottom. Now, the secret reveal. Standard issue is mustard. Dip your pogo in mustard. Everyone, the I'm gonna get yelled at on YouTube, I know it. We're doing something different today. Instead of mustard, we're gonna take some mayo. And I got these packets at drive through You just ask for them. Sometimes they throw them in, sometimes they look at you funny, sometimes they charge you extra, but ask for them. You never know. I got these at drive through We're gonna take some mayo packets, put them in the cup here, and stir in some Hades hot sauce. And we're gonna have a spicy mayo dipping for our pogos. The hot sauce of choice today is Paradigm Shift. It is a really, really good sauce. It is a four out of five flames, medium to hot sauce. It's not unbearable, very rich in layers of flavor. I love this stuff. Good on wings, good on bologna sandwiches, <laughs> good on scrambled eggs. Today we're gonna try them on pogos, mixed in with a little mayo. And I did plan ahead, and I brought a Ziploc bag for a garbage bag. So I'm gonna take about six of these packets. I think I brought six or seven. Just put them in the bottom of this cup and then add hot sauce to your preference. Most of us eating here today really like hot sauce. So we're gonna get a little carried away with it. Just gonna dress my fire here for a bit. It's coming along nicely. 
Our water's almost at a boil for our coffee. Things have got good timing. We're having a great day in the woods after lunch here. I'm going to recoup with a coffee and head out on the trail looking for mushrooms because it's the right time of year for it. Let's hope we have a video for you for that too. Now, one of our partners in crime on this channel, Anthony, does not like mayonnaise. But when you add this to it, he eats mayonnaise. So, thank you, Hades. I love mayonnaise. And this is the only way I get it in the woods when I'm with Anthony. Two more packs. Here we go. Try not to burn myself on camera like I usually do. So, there's three of us here today. We've prepared three sticks. You don't want them too, too long because they should be able to hold them there. Keep it from getting burnt, but not so long that it will run the risk of if you let go, it's going to knock your pot over into the fire. So be careful how long you want it, but you definitely want the bark about an inch or two peeled back further than where the hot dog's going to end up. So because we already have a peeled stick, I'm going to use this with the paradigm shift. Now, like I said, we're going to get carried away today and we're going to enjoy this. And I need to order more hot sauce. That's a good problem. So we're just going to stir this up together. It's good to make the mayonnaise at this time, it'll help the two flavors kind of marry together. Let the sauce work in. I think this is going to be delicious. I haven't tried it yet. It's something I kind of decided to do last minute, and I'm going to try it now. So note to self, the one with this funky bark on it is mine. Oh, that's good. And there are those layers of flavor. Heat and sweetness and then more heat. I love this stuff. Okay. This one's mine. The rest of you, forget it. There might be a fight on camera. <laughs> oh, that's so good. All right, let's switch out our coffee water for our oil and get our oil going. So I'll have the oil on a rock there and I'm just gonna pull some coals around it. Try to keep the burning stuff away from it and get the hot coals going all around it. Give that a few minutes to come up to temperature. In the meantime, it's coffee time. We use these Sea to Summit cups. They're fantastic. They collapse down. They weigh nothing. They fit inside your pot. They don't have to nest together. There's usually enough room in the pot then to put other things like your coffee for the day or your hot chocolate or whatever you're into. So these Sea to Summit cups, we have the extra large ones. I used to be an instant coffee guy, but the more I try different coffees, the more I realize I deserve better than that. If I'm in the woods, I'm going to enjoy myself, I'm going to relax, I'm going to have a good cup of coffee. There's nothing wrong with the quick and easy instant, but when there's more than one of us in the group having coffee, I prefer to have the fancier stuff. And today we're having Hades. So this is the Sea to Summit coffee maker. It has a filter in the bottom, but it's a lot easier to clean up if you put a paper filter in. It's a pour through coffee maker. It sits on the Sea to Summit cups. It's a beautiful thing. And for the lovely Marla, she's having Irish rapture today. So you put in enough for one serving of coffee, Little pour through action here. Thank God they have a screen on that, Marla. I messed that up in a hurry. There we go. The great thing about using the Sea to Summit combination of the two is that you know this cup is the same as the other cup. So when it comes to pouring water in, you're not going to overflow too much. I'm just going to let that sit there and steep for a minute. Let it soak down. Check our batter and stir that up. Batter is under pressure. Probably not good that I left the cap on when I put beer in. I'm glad I taught everyone a very good lesson in the woods. Glad I wore a black shirt so you could see all of that all over me. It's not cooking unless there's a bit of a mess. Here we go. Hot dog in the batter. Coffee for Marla. I'm going to have some of their house blend today. Great thing about Hades, if you're unsure what to order, they have these smaller versions of a sample pack and you get four different flavors in one pack. Check out their website. I discovered what I like and what I didn't like. And what I realized is I didn't like anything. I liked it all. Now to check the oil. I'm gonna take it off the fire because the more I handle this pot around the fire, the more risk there is of the oil spilling. And I don't want that. One way you can check the oil is to take a drop of batter and drop it in to see if it's ready and it's not, not even close. So we're going to kick this fire up a bit. Well, here we are. Fire's going nice. We're keeping the flames away from the pot as much as possible, but bringing the hot coals over towards it. You want your oil between 350 and 375. So by putting a drop of the batter in and seeing if it bubbles and comes up to the top and floats indicates that it's ready to go. And that when you put your batter on your pogo, on your hot dog and dip it in, 
you're going to be ready to go as well. The hotter, the better, but you don't want the oil to burn either. You don't need it around 500. You need it between 350 and 375. Fire itself is a little uncontrollable today because the wind keeps changing direction. So we're very mindful of that when we're both cooking near a fire, but also looking at what it could potentially catch in our area. I see some motion happening there in the oil. I'm going to give it a test run and see if it's ready or not. So the advantage to having this being like it is, is you can hold it and dip the whole dog in. You want your batter good and thick, but you also want your dog good and dry. Because if the dog is wet or moist, the batter's not going to stick to it. And you're not going to have a pogo that's really 100%. And here we go. Well, that one's cooking. I'll prepare the other dog. It's a nice way to spend the day by a fire. It's ideally if you just do one hot dog at a time, it gives the oil a chance. I'm gonna let this hot dog just sit there and dry out a bit. It felt a little damp from the packaging. Enjoying my coffee a lot. Try not to take it in and out too. It's very tempting to check and see how it's doing. Every so often turn it depending on the size of your pot and the angle you're doing things at. The great thing about this little snack is that it limits the dishes other than the sauce I made. So this oil is taking its sweet time really getting up to good temperature. I rushed it, I wasn't patient. It was just at that almost threshold of being at the right temperature. When I put the cold dog in and the, everything, it dropped the temperature. So I had to kick up the fire a bit and get that temperature going. So like everything, it takes patience and a little love and tenderness around a fire cooking, cooking around a fire. The batter's starting to brown up now though, and the oil has a bit of a boil to it. So this one I think is a fail because I put it in too soon. I don't know. I'm not giving up. The oil's at a rolling boil right now. The batter's nice and thick. Ah! This is a work in progress. I'd sooner much do this on a day hike and have it fail and us just end up eating hot dogs than me being in the middle of Algonquin Park on an eight day canoe trip and realize that one of the menu food, food items we plan for menu is a total waste and we hauled that in for nothing. So experiment, learn and hope for the best. But the good news is I've got a really good temp on my oil and this one's turning out much better than the other one. It's good to have this length on the stick. I'm starting to feel the temperature of the fire but I'm not at any means like burning myself or cooking my hand. I wouldn't call it a perfect pogo but the batter's cooked. The dipping sauce is here. Come join us, Tony, oh. on camera. I'm definitely not gonna eat this right away because it just came out of the bloody fire. Oh yeah, it's definitely cooked. That's a good start. Thoughts, comments? Tastes good. Then the mayo, spicy mayo? The only way I'll eat mayo. I mean, you still got batter on there. Yeah. It's cooked. Thank you very much for lunch. Thank you for being patient. Thanks for taking my good humored editing on the chin. <laughs> I still call that a success. I don't give a shit. Pro tips we've learned. One, make sure your oil's really hot. Don't rush it like we did. The first one didn't turn out. Two, make sure your hot dog's really dry. It's good to put it on a stick, set it off to the side of the fire. You don't want to cook it, but you just want it to dry out. It holds the batter better. Finally, the batter itself, very good pro tip. As you can tell by my shirt and the mess next to the fire, if you're using carbonated beverages in a batter to help it along, don't seal it up all the way, cause kablooey. <laughs>
Now I'm just going to make a decision here for everybody and say that this pogo in the pot is for our hardworking gentleman behind the scenes, Anthony LeClaire, owner and operator of LeClaire Studios, our excellent cameraman, our excellent editor, our excellent producer, the director who has this soft, gentle way of saying, you screwed up and do it better this time, let's try that again. He gets this pogo.